Hey there, in this video we are going to look at simplification within solving linear equations and we will look at combining like terms and distributing. So to start, we're going to talk about real quick what solving actually means. So solving a linear equation means that we are actually finding the value or values for the variable or variables that make that equation true. So we've already talked about what do we do to figure out is this number a solution to this equation where we're already given the number and we figure it out by plugging it in and seeing if it's true at the end or not. Now we are going to get into well, how do we actually find that number ourselves. So here is an example um, that we will eventually be able to do. And this is an example of solving a linear equation that also requires simplification and manipulation. So they start with this equation here. And just to briefly go over what they do, and again, we'll go into why they do that, how you know when to do it, and all of that in the, the upcoming um, sections or videos. So they multiply both sides by 6. When they do that, that eliminates our 1 sixth, and it gives us the equation x minus 16 plus 30 equals 18. They combine like terms over here. And then when they combine like terms, they subtract 14 from both sides. And that's how they end up with the solution of x equals 4. And if you took that 4 and plugged it back into this original equation up at the top, you would end up with a true statement, 3 equals 3, showing us that that is a solution. So that is just a quick overview of what we will eventually be doing. So now let's jump into the goal of solving an equation. So the main objective of solving an equation is to reach a format where the variable is completely isolated on one side of the equation. So for example, we see x equals 4, or x equals 3y plus z, or p equals 12, or d equals 12m over r. So sometimes there's a number on its own on the other side, sometimes there is an expression on the other side of the equal sign, but notice that all of these have a single variable by itself on one side of the equation. So we're solving in this case for x, we're solving for x, we're solving for p, we're solving for d, and that's what we end up with, that variable that we're solving for by itself. So typically we're looking to get the variable equal to a number, but depending on the equation and the number of variables, we may only be able to get the variable equal to an actual expression. So to achieve that goal of getting the variable by itself, we can simplify the equation and we can manipulate it through inverse operations, which we'll talk a little bit more throughout this unit. So I mentioned simplification. Simplification is an action, any action that is taken on the equation to make it more organized, concise, and easy to understand. So simplifications are applied to specific terms or elements of the equation and only affect those terms, not the rest of the equation. So simplifying, for example, would be like combining like terms or distributing or factoring, which we'll talk about more in a future lesson. Um, and these are just three examples. We are going to go into right now the combining like terms and distributing. So looking at combining like terms, we can use the commutative property to collect the x values together and the constants together in an expression like this. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we can put together. So when we have 3x plus 5 minus 2x plus 2, we can look at these two terms as like terms because they are both terms that have only an x. There's no exponent on the x. Um, each of them have the same, technically the same one as an exponent, if I were to write one there. And they both have an x in there. It does not matter that one has a 3 in front of the x and one has a negative 2. What makes them like terms is that they are the same variable with the same exponent on that variable. Now, 5 and 2 are also like terms because they're each constants that do not have variables attached to them. So 3x minus 2x is just x, and then 5 plus 2 is 7. So that's going to be x plus 7 as our answer here when we combine like terms. So that was more of a basic one. Let's look at a little bit more of a complicated example. So if I see here negative 4x to the fourth power plus 8x to the third power minus 9x plus 7x to the third power minus 6 plus 5x, the first thing that I would do is I would start to highlight or underline or circle or mark, however you want to do it, anything that are like terms. So for example, I see x to the fourth in this term. There are no other x to the fourths. So I'm going to switch colors and I'm going to do plus 8x to the third power, and I will also highlight 
plus 7x to the third power because those both have third powers on the x and so that makes them like terms. Then I go on to the next one, minus 9x. This is just an x and 5x is also just an x. And then that leaves us with this minus 6, which does not have any like terms in there. There are no other constants to combine with that minus 6. So I'm just going to go in order from left to right. So negative 4x to the fourth will remain because there are no other like terms to add with it. And then 8x to the third power plus 7x to the third power is going to be plus 15x to the third power. Notice that I did not change the exponents. When I'm adding those like terms or subtracting like terms, the exponent on the variable does not change. Just like over here, when we did 3x minus 2x, we did not change the exponent on the x. It remained a 1. We just added or subtracted, in this case, the 3 and the minus 2 in front of those variables. Continuing on in number two, we did this and we did the two pink ones. So let's look at the green now. So negative 9x plus 5x. So if I think of this as negative 9x plus 5x, you can also think of this as 5x minus 9x. It depends how your brain interprets it or takes it, however you want to think about it. But when you do that, you end up with negative 4x. So next is going to be minus 4x. And then we just have this minus 6 at the end that does not combine with anything else. So that would be my final answer on number 2. So now we're going to talk about distributing. So if we have a number in front of a set of parentheses, such as 3 times x minus 1, we can simplify that expression by distributing the 3 into the parentheses for each of those terms in the parentheses. So 3 times x and 3 times negative 1. 3 times x is going to be 3x. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So that would be our simplified um, version once we've distributed the 3 into the parentheses. And once we've distributed that 3 into the parentheses, we can drop those parentheses at that point. Now, number four, we see x times 5x to the fourth minus 7x. So even though this is not just a number out front, but it's a variable, we can go ahead and distribute that to each term in the parentheses. So x times 5x to the fourth. Remember, if I was just doing x times x to the fourth, so pretend for a second that five wasn't there, this would be x to the first times x to the fourth. We would add those exponents because we are multiplying like bases, and one plus four would be five. So this would become x to the fifth power. So x times 5x to the fourth power, we're going to leave the 5 in front, and then the first power and the fourth power get added together to be the fifth power on the x. So 5x to the fifth power. Next, we go ahead and do x times negative 7x. And when you do x times negative 7x, you get basically a 1 in front here. 1 times negative 7 is negative 7. x times x becomes x to the second power. So typically when we were combining like terms, if I would have added x plus negative 7x, I would have ended up with like a 1 minus 7, which is negative 6, x. And the x would not have changed exponents because we were adding or combining like terms or subtracting, however you want to look at that. When you are adding and subtracting, that's considered combining like terms. But when we are multiplying, we do actually change the exponents. Because if you remember our exponent rules, our exponents are 1 and 1. And when we multiply x to the first times x to the first, it becomes x to the second because we add the 1 and the 1. So remember when you're multiplying those variables, we have to add the exponents. So x times negative 7x is going to be minus 7x squared. And that will be your final answer on this one. So in summary, we talked about a few things today. We talked about the goal when we're solving an equation. We want to get the variable by itself. So the variable needs to be equal to something else, whether it's a number or an expression. But we want that variable by itself on one side of the equal sign. Combining like terms. Remember when we combine like terms, for example, if I gave you um, 12x squared, plus 2x squared. To combine those, you would add the 12 and the 2 in front, and you would leave the x squared as x squared. You would not add the exponents or change it. It would become 12 plus 2 is 14, 14x squared. However, if let's say I had an example uh, where I was distributing, let's say I distributed 
2x times 4x to the second plus 5. If I distribute that 2x to each term in the parentheses, I would do 2 times 4, which is 8, and also x times x squared. x is to the first power, x squared is to the second power, and that would be adding the 1 and the 2 to get x to the third power. So this first set of multiplication here would be x to the third power. And then we would go on to 2x times 5. And 2x times 5 is going to be 10x. So notice and remember, when you are multiplying variables together, you add the exponents. But when you are simply combining like terms, we have to have the exact same exponent to start with. And then we can combine them by adding the coefficients in front of those variables and not changing the exponents. And then we talked briefly that factoring is another type of simplification, and um, we will talk more about that coming up.